All right, y'all, this is Alexis, Sophia Leather. This is like my 10th take. I had a coffee and I can't speak, but we're making a fire fried chin strap today. All right, and then what I, what I talk, you see what I'm talking about? <sighs> Whatever, bro, I'm done. I'm just, I, I'm just gonna shoot from the hip, I don't care. All right, we're making a chin strap. There's a couple things you need. You need my uh, blueprints, all right? Blueprints you're gonna find in the description and in the pin first comments. There's gonna be a link right there. Um, there's also a lot more resources there as far as the hardware I use and where to get it and the leather thickness and anything else you need to make this, the tools needed, all that's gonna be in there. I'm gonna assume that you guys have basic leather crafting skills. Of course, in the description, there's gonna be timestamps which should uh, put some indicators on the timeline and also you can hit that indicator and it'll uh, populate a thing called chapters so you can kind of skip around in the video this is this is not going to be a level 10 video uh, this is fairly easy to make so a couple things about um, this video I'm not going to go over exactly the dimensions that is essentially my blueprint what I'm going to go over is the assembly cutting and stuff like that so yeah anyway so let's get started we're going to turn over here and let's get started okay bye like I said you need these blueprints all right you need the blueprints. You need the three quarter inch wide guard buckle. Watch that video I was talking to you about. And you need this alligator snap. Watch that video I was talking about. All right, whole grain leather. You can use whatever you want. I'm using English bridle from uh, Wicked and Craig. English bridle from Wicked and Craig. And uh, this is about nine ounces. All right, we are gonna skive a couple of sections. You don't need to do that, but it'll make your life a lot easier, trust me. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out, my pieces, and let's get started. The beauty of using a one and a half inch strip is that when you cut this down, you actually yield two straps. Like I said, I think you need about 40 inches. We'll cut more if we need to, so we'll set this off to the side. All right, so if you want to take pattern A, A as an alpha, it says make two of these. So we're going to go ahead and make two of these right now. So what, what I do is I make a, a mark, right? I make a mark. That mark right there, that is the beginning of that pattern. I'm going to make two A's, and then I'll show you what that looks like, and then I'll do the rest. Fast forward. All right. You see, I made my marks right there. That's the beginning of that pattern. And if you notice right here, uh, that's the end of this pattern. So I'm not going to cut this out yet. I'm going to make the other one because I have to make two. But I'm going to show you a little trick. And um, so this is the end of this pattern. And then I go really close to it. So to me, putting something really close to the last one indicates that this is a new piece. All right, so um, now that second dot there on the right side, that's the beginning of the new alpha pattern. So let's go ahead and do that. This is two of the alphas. And I think I have enough room. I think I have enough room down here. So if you go to C, we definitely have enough room to, to do that. If you look at the bottom of the print, you notice the length, the total length, and all you gotta do is eyeball it right here and say, yep, I definitely have enough for that. So that's what we're gonna get squared, that's what we're gonna do right now. So this is basically A and C. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go ahead and do number Bravo. So the finish size for my suspenders for this print is the total length is about 24 inches. I, I know a lot of guys want them to be a little bit longer. So this is where on pattern B, this is where you would extend the length. So pattern A and C are always gonna be consistently the same. Pattern B, this is where you would either make it longer or shorter. I don't know why you would make it shorter, but you would, you would make it longer. So right now as it stands, it's gonna end up being about 24 inches, which is a standard size two foot chin strap. If you want to make it longer, some guys want it a little longer. Uh, I would say that a popular length, I would say if you wanted to offer an extra long, I'd go 29 inches. So at B, 
that middle section there. So this is where you would extend it right here on this part. Anyway, let's go back and uh, let me go ahead and mark my B pattern. Now, I'm gonna tell you one thing you don't wanna do, and that is you, we know the total length here, right? Don't cut off the total length and then work your numbers. Start from left to right, because if you go left to right, then it's gonna be accurate. If you cut it off already right here, the total length, and then try to plug in these holes, no bueno, all right? Oh, okay, now everything's marked out. Let's uh, punch these out and let's talk about these holes. So now we're gonna get to the part where we punch everything out and we're gonna punch the holes and punch everything out. Every X on these patterns where it says X indicates some, the, um, the hole and that is what we basically marked. Those holes are gonna be size 530 seconds. To me, 530 seconds works perfect with the number nine brass rivets, number nine brass rivets, and it also works really well with the Chicago screws that come from Weaver Leather. If you're using number 12 rivets, then you could probably go a tighter hole. Um, that's just up to you, but 530 seconds for me for the number nine brass rivets, and also works perfect for Chicago screws if you wanna assemble this with Chicago screws, which you can. So 530 seconds, punch, that's what I'm doing. Another thing I wanna talk about on those patterns is that gray area. If you notice on the gray area or the darker colored um, at the ends there, that is a preference, all right? So you can use whatever you want. You can make this straight if you wanted to, or you can use the radius that I, that I provided. Um, that, that's entirely a preference and totally up to you. But basically what we're gonna do now, or see where we started that dot? That basically indicates where we're gonna start the cut. So if you want a straight cut, you just come straight down that. Or if you wanted that radius, you use your punch. And that is it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just punch these out. What I do is I cut out all the ends first on all my straps and then I punch the holes. So what, what I'm looking for now is the two dots that are close together. See those two dots that are close together? To me, that tells me that's the end of one piece and the beginning of another. So look out for that. That's just a little tip. That's what I do. I found that to be the most effective way of doing this. And I always double check. Why? Because I've messed up before, trust me. I'm gonna go ahead and punch all this out and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. All right, this is all cut out and I am gonna punch the holes. The reason why I'm gonna punch the holes is because we have to skive a couple of these areas. You don't have to, but to weave it through your little um, metal bracket on your helmet, you kind of need it a little thinner, but you could do it just as is. Maybe use a lighter leather, like a, a eight ounce or seven ounce. I'm, I'm not a big fan of using seven ounce for something like this. But anyway, so you have to skive a couple of places and it's easier to put the holes in first and then skive because you know where, wh what you have to skive. So I'm just gonna punch these out at the little dots and indicators that we, that we made. Wow, the sun is coming down. So this is what, I'm not coming down, coming in here, pretty good. This is A, wow. The sun though, on the reels, hit me right in the face. Whew. Whoa, that is hitting me right, can you guys see that? So this is A, all right? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna skive from here out. This is where the snaps or the Chicago screws come in. And from here, this circle out, we're gonna skive that down a little bit too. That's A, we're gonna do that on both. This is, I think, C. Wow, it is really bright. That is C. And we're gonna just skive it down a little bit from here up to the hole. Um, you don't have to, this is the chin protector. And you'll see that uh, skiving it down is gonna make the assembly a little bit easier. Wow, this whole, this sun is ridiculous. This is number B, this is a main strap, and we're gonna sky from the hole out on both ends, all right? And you'll see why when we, we assemble. So the, basically one side of this is gonna be the buckle, the female part, and the other side is gonna be just a thumb tab, all right? It's gonna fold on itself.
All right, let's go Skype this down. So for A, you can almost just Skype the whole thing, and I'll tell you why. So um, whatever Skyver you have, uh, if you have that cheapy Skyver, the one that everybody hates, that doesn't work really well, this will work. And you basically want to get it down to about six ounces or so. And you can almost skive this whole thing down, you know? Because all you're left with is just that little piece there. And it's not really skived that much down, but it really does help the assembly uh, portion. I wouldn't go skive it down too much. I'll show you here in a second. Let me... Uh, Another thing too is this part here is the part that's going to fold and go through that metal bracket in your chin strap. If you have the Metro style that has that really, really tight plastic piece, you might want to get this down a little, a little further. Okay, you might want to skype that down just a little bit more. I've made a couple for some guys and it was a little tight, but uh, they got it through there. So next time I would have made it more. This is piece B and um, from the hole out. This is where the female buckle is going to go, as well as the thumb loop. The, uh, not thumb loop, the um, thumb tab. This is one of the best things I've ever invested in. Um, this is a chin protector, so that metal alligator uh, snap is not eating up your jaw. Um, so this is kind of tricky, but I get it in there and then I kind of pull it and that's just gonna help a little bit. I mean, nothing crazy. All right, let's go ahead and bevel and burnish. All right, so before we bevel and burn, burnish, I kinda wanna show you, I didn't really take that much off. All right, there's not that much that I took off. So I think get it down to about seven or eight ounces and you should be fine. Or you could just make this whole thing out of eight ounces and you'll be fine. That's, that's your call. Your call completely, see? It's not that much tighter. But uh. Yeah, so this is the part right here where you would put whatever kind of personal, uh, customizable thing. If they want um, a name stamped here or um, they want a little pretty little flower concho, um, if they want it painted uh, with whatever, whatever they want, this is where you would do it right here. This is a main strap. It's basically going to get connected like this, right? Here is your female buckle, and this is where I would do it, on the female buckle end, okay? I would do it right here going down. I'm just gonna bevel and burnish this. I'm a fast forward because I think you guys know how to do this. If not, I have a leather crafting tips uh, playlist. I'm using a number one. I think a number one, a weaver leather number one edge beveler. To me, that looks really good with the number nines. Uh, 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 nine ounce. Hold on, I wanted to move that garbage can so you don't see my garbage can. It's not really professional. All right, y'all. I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna use my machine because I spent money on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cheat and use this. But uh, if you guys wanna know other tricks, on how to do this, look up my leather crafting tips playlist. And if it's not on there, it's because I haven't made it yet. Oh, yeah, real quick. This is where you would actually bevel burnish and paint the edges if you want to paint the edges. Do what you want on this. I'm going to leave it raw. I like that look. Um, but yeah, this is where you bevel burnish and get the edges however you want them. I spent a little extra time on the chin strap part of the meat and potatoes of this. This is where they're gonna be grabbing and holding it, so I'll make this extra nice. This is something new I've been doing. I've talked about this before, but I use acrylic resiline on the edges. And what I noticed, um, when I used to use just beeswax and burnish it, I mean, I burnished it really good with the beeswax, and after a structure fire or training or you start sweating, um, you start to get the little fibers coming up again. But with the acrylic resiline, for some reason, it doesn't do that. I think it kind of pastes it down, it kind of creates a plastic layer over it, and it lasts. So I've been sticking with it. 
on a lot of my projects, almost all of them, and I love it. I don't even do the beeswax burnish thing anymore. Just water, a little glycerin saddle soap for a little slickiness. And uh, I'll do this, acrylic resiline. All right, assembly time. All right, so we have pattern B, A times two, and then C, A, B, C. All right, we're gonna first get patterns A squared away, as those are the hardest. So we'll move this to the side. And this is a section and this is a part where you could, you could use Chicago screws instead of the brass rivets. That's your call. All right, so here on A, we're gonna fold this over when, it, when it's done. And we're gonna put our Chicago screws through there. And this is how they get it. And all they have to do is weave it through there and um, secure it on itself. But we're not gonna do that right now. That's, at, that's the very last step. The next step is we're gonna assemble our alligator snap and our buckle on this end, all right? So we're gonna take our mail. We have to take our mail buckle and I go flat side, flat side on flat side, flat side on flat side, flat on the flesh, flat on the flesh. I made a rhyme. Let's do it every time, time, time. That was dumb but you're still watching because you want to learn how to do this every time. That was even dumber. All right, there we go. That's good to go. And we're just going to either put a screw in there or a rivet. I do rivets. Now you can do this how you want. I like it to be uniform. So I always put the, f I always put the flat head on the outside where people see it. I guess I should have grabbed my tools. That was stupid. All right, now we're gonna get the next A. So that's done, by the way. This is done. Let's get the next A. Same thing. We're not gonna worry about this section here. We're gonna work on this longer piece here. And this is how you weave this through. You can do how you want. I go in from the top like that, right? And then I put this back piece in. And to me, that's just a little bit easier. However you want to do it, it needs to end up looking like that. It needs to end up looking like that. The sun is the worst. And then you're going to take part C and you're going to put it right behind like that. Let me put a rivet through there so I can show you. This is how it's going to go together. Rivet through here, rivet through here, right? And then the grain side facing out, the flesh towards the cheek. And that's going to go in there. All right. You can see without this piece, this metal will be hitting um, their jaw. And that's how it should look. Now getting this riveted in, or sh this is where the Chicago screw would be easier, but this one you gotta kind of really pull it towards you here. So pull it that way, or get this kind of flattened out before you do anything so you have space to work with. Just like that. And I don't go all the way in first. I just tap it so I'm still able to move that chin protector. So I didn't go all the way down. I can still move this to make sure it's lined up and then I'll finish it off. There you go. And that's how A should look like. So these are the two A's. This light is the worst. This is the worst build along I've ever seen. That is too bright. I'll change a view later in a second. But now we're gonna go to part B. 
and simply we're going to weave this in here just like this. Real simple. What's up, buddy? Hi, buddy. You're going to school right now? Yeah. All right. Hold on, boys. Let me, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, say goodbye. Hold on. All right, I'm back. So yeah, if you do notice, these clips have some, some naming there, some kind of, uh, their mark, their trademark, or their labeling. I put that in the bottom, because the other side doesn't have it. So that's a small detail to pay attention to. Yep, and like everything else, I put the head on the outside. That's it. It doesn't matter which side because they're the both dimensions. They're the, the same, so it doesn't matter which side. I would pick, I would use caution and make sure that the strong side is gonna be where um, it's gonna be going to the alligator snap. So this is the alligator snap and it's gonna get weaved through here. Uh, so I wanna make sure that this end is solid. Just a small detail, you know? Because this is gonna be the working end. Up to about here is where they're gonna be constantly pulling uh, through their alligator snap. So if you have a piece that's a little suspect or a little spongy, well, I wouldn't use it, but if, you, if you're going to, um, put that towards the buckle end. That's another reason why I put their name and stamping here. Okay. Now, all we have to do is to finish this off, is weave this through the alligator snap. And for all intents and purposes, it's basically done at this point. But what I'd like to do is, see, you have your snap. It's basically done, but the problem is, if they pull this all the way through and DC from their buckle, they lose that piece and you have to make them another one. So if you wanna make more money, just skip this part. But I'm a nice guy. So you just weave this through and all you're doing is, uh, if you wanna use a Chicago screw, you can, but you're just gonna rivet on itself. That's it. And what that does is prevents it from pulling through the alligator snap. Bye Jay. Bye. I love you buddy. And make sure, make sure that the grain is facing out. You know what I mean? And that is a real simple way of preventing, preventing that from, from pulling through. Easy peasy, pumpkin wheezy. See, and it looks kind of sharp. Plus it gives you a way to, to um, gives you something to hold on to when you're trying to pull it through. So it will not go through that. It cannot, impossible. Next is at this point, you can do one of two things. I know a lot of guys like the snaps. You can actually put line 24 snaps, right? No, it's a female side of the line 24 snap. You could put them both here. Oh man, you can put them both right here and then the male side right here and then it'll collapse. This is what weaves through the helmet. So that's your call. I use Chicago screws um, because, I don't know, I just like it. The only side effect of the Chicago screws is that, uh, I gotta open this, these holes up a little bit. The holes are good, but when you, uh, Skive it, it kind of stretches them a little bit. So I'm just opening them up a little bit. That's all I'm doing. I use quarter inch Chicago screws for this. Quarter inch Chicago screws. And I don't Loctite it for obvious reasons, right? If they get it and they can't open it, they can't assemble it, right? They can't put it on their helmet. So don't Loctite. But you gotta make sure that they know that they have to um, so it doesn't back out. You can also send them extra screws. I always send people like a, an extra screw or two, screw or two, um, this way they have it. I don't, I don't go all the way down. You know, I don't. I just leave it in there so it could sit nice and tight. And uh, 
So when they get it, all they have to do is unscrew it and then uh, weave it through and then screw it. But if you want to do a snap, you can do, like I said, you can do line 24 snaps right here. I'm not a fan. I don't like snaps, but they work. You know, a lot of guys do it this way, but with snaps. So you can use snaps if you like at, th at this point. And that is it, my friends. I don't know, but yeah, that's done. Let's just look at, see how long this is. Like I said, clothes should be 24 inches. Yep, and we're right at 24 inches, closed. I mean, wide open, 24 inches wide open. So like I said, pattern B is where you would extend from this rivet hole to that rivet hole. You'd extend that out as far as you want. And um, I'm sure you guys can figure that out. But let me give you my little outro. Bye, hold on. All right, hold on, let me put a little secret sauce on here so it looks good on camera so I can get a thumbnail. Hold on. I want it to look good. People are all about them thumbnails, man, it's crazy. All right, so there you have it. How to make a firefighter chin strap. I wanna say thank you for your support. Don't forget the links are in the description or where you can purchase a pattern. Links are in the description where you could uh, learn how to use my pattern if you have a hard time using the pattern. Also where to get the hardware, what kind of hardware, and also basic leather tools where you need to, uh, where to get the tools um, and what do I use. There's a whole bunch of stuff. In this. I got carried away and I created a lot of work for myself. That was not smart. Anyway, um, that was not smart. Anyways, in the description and in the pin first comments, you have links to everything. If you need anything else, don't forget to comment below. Thank you very much. God bless you. Talk to you later. Bye.